On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at, our situation is not good. The Lord Jesus came because our situation is not good, because we've become lost, because we've gone astray, because we're wounded and sick, because, because there's a blindness we have, because we're on this river that if we just go with the flow, we're going to end up to destruction, a waterfall. One of the things I was taught as a teenager uh, up, up in Canada, in the rural area where we lived, is very practical knowledge. If ever you're driving down the highway or down a road and you see a deer stuck in a fence, you know what you're supposed to do? Just keep driving. <clears throat> and the reason is they say, now I don't know, don't, don't take this as, you know, 100%. You can Google it to make sure it's correct. But anyways, um, the reason is, they say, if you approach a deer that's stuck in a fence, you know, sometimes their antlers are in the fence or a leg or whatever. If you approach the deer, it'll panic. It'll be really, you know, uh, afraid. And it, it is likely to hurt itself in its panic and trying to get away from you. So just leave the deer and hopefully it'll eventually kind of get itself out. And to me, it's, it's kind of one of the many images that describe why the Lord Jesus came. You know, again, when, you, when, you're, when you're driving down uh, a road, if you, uh, this happened to me, I think, once, once or maybe twice when I saw a deer and I just kept driving, deer stuck. Um, but the ideal is if you could just suddenly turn yourself into a deer, maybe even a little bit of a smaller deer, so that the deer that stuck would not be afraid. You know, there's nothing scary about a little deer coming up to a bigger deer and saying, uh, excuse me, you seem to be stuck. And guess what? I can help you. I can help you get unstuck, you know? And in a sense, uh, not more than in a sense, that's, that's why the Lord Jesus came. You know, and again, the Lord Jesus came very harmlessly. He didn't come, you know, whatever, as a, what we would call or what we would describe as a superhero. He came as a child. He came as a man who, didn't, who wasn't bearing arms, weapons. He just came as a, as a, 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 a humble man to, to, to lead us to freedom. And you know, this, this reality of our faith, you know, our faith is very mysterious, but it is also very simple. Sometimes we tend to want to complicate it, but it's, it's not that complicated. There's a simplicity uh, to it. You know, Jesus ascends to heaven. In the ascension, He's basically showing us, He's giving us a demo of what each one of us is meant to experience one day, going to our Father in heaven. So again, we are like deer. We need help. He became one of us, uh, and he wants, to, uh, he wants us like Him to be transformed and to live forever. And we hear this in Romans chapter 6, verse 8. Paul says, If then we have died with Him, we believe that we shall also live with Him. You know, it's as, it's as simple as that. Jesus came. He says, okay, I see you guys are stuck. I'm going to show you the way. If you die with me, you'll live with me forever. You too will ascend into heaven. And of course, you know, he, he, he gave us his teaching. Our first communion kids today, they're going to receive the body and blood of Christ. And in John chapter 6, verse 58, the Lord Jesus says, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Again, this is, this is God made man who became one of us. He's saying, hey, you want to live forever? Eat this bread. I am the bread of life come down from heaven. Eat this bread, you'll live forever. And again, it's so important for us to listen to the Lord Jesus. And it's also important for us to just to understand the gravity of our situation, to understand um, how much we are in a situation where in many ways we've been deceived. It's kind of like the image or the, the, the story of the guy who was injured, he was hurt, and he, his, his sight became really blurry. He could barely see, and he wanted to get help. And there was an evil person, and he told, the evil person told the guy who was, whose 
eyesight had become harmed, he said to him, oh, if you want help, just hop in this boat on the river, and the current will take you to help, when really the current, the river, was leading to a waterfall, and everyone who went down this waterfall would die. And again, in, in a mysterious way, and again, again, this is kind of the, the gravity of our situation. Anytime we want a reminder of the gravity of our situation, all we need to do is look at the crucifix and remind ourselves that Jesus would not have died for us, would not have died such an awful death had not our situation been so serious. So again, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, we're told, the huge dragon the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. Again, in some mysterious way, this world has become a place of darkness. We know that Jesus is the light who's come into the darkness, and Jesus called the devil the prince of this world. And in some mysterious way, we're all affected by this deception. We all, you've heard me share before, we all think we're a bunch of chickens in, in, in some way. And the Lord came to, to kind of lead us out of that. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, listen to this. Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. I remember as a teenager reading that passage and, and kind of in, in, inside of myself understanding the truth of what Jesus was saying. Isn't it hard, brothers and sisters, to follow the Lord Jesus? Isn't it hard to, to simply live a good, virtuous life? When we do strive to live a good, virtuous life, don't we oftentimes feel alone? Sometimes even in our own families or in our classrooms or in our workplaces, we're just trying to be good, virtuous children of God. And sometimes we feel like we're, we're among the few. So many people are simply on this road or this river that's leading to destruction because they're deceived. They don't know their identity, dignity, authority, and destiny. And again, Jesus says, few find the road that lead, leads to life. In John chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord Jesus says, this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. Again, this is mysterious. It's unfortunate. But we, we, we have to have this reality check sometimes to realize that unfortunately we're in a world where it seems like the many are content just going with the flow of the world that leads to destruction. We need to recognize this, not in condemnation of others, but as an impetus to, to lead us to help others. Each one of us, brothers and sisters, again, in some mysterious way, there is a woundedness in us. We're kind of like that deer. We're stuck. We're, in, we're, 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 we're wounded. We need help. You know, sometimes you hear of um, veterinarians trying to capture a, a, a duck or a squirrel because the, the, the duck or the squirrel or some animal is hurt. And the veterinarian can give the animal medicine or, or, or some kind of, you know, help to help the animal. But the animals are scared. They're running away. They don't realize, they might not even realize that they're sick, and they might not realize that someone's trying to help them. And again, the Lord Jesus is the one. He came. He became one of us to say, hey, you guys need help, and I can help you. I can show you the way. I'm not here to hurt you. In Luke chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus says, those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. And the truth is, brothers and sisters, is every one of us has, has inherited in a way this, this sickness, this woundedness. We've all fallen. Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 23, Paul tells us, all have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. Again, every one of us in some way we're stuck, and the Lord Jesus wants to, 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 to set us free.
We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. And so, again, the Lord Jesus, kind of like that, that person who became a deer, a little deer, to help the deer get unstuck. The Lord Jesus, God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, He became man. He became man. He came to us harmless. Again, a child in a manger, born to a poor family. No weapons, no entourage of soldiers, a humble carpenter, preacher, teacher. He came, and the, 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 the main thing, the, the primary message He had for us, this is God, become man, is that your Father in heaven still loves you. You are children of a Father in heaven, and He loves you more than you could ever imagine. And He will never stop loving you. This is, this is the primary message of the Lord Jesus. You have a Father in heaven who has not forgotten you, who will never forget you. Even if a mother should forget her child, the God your Father will never forget you. He, he, he made you and He loves you and He's going to love you forever. That's the primary message. The second part of the message is again Jesus who is God made man. Again, this is kind of like a person who becomes a deer. He came to proclaim to us that God is not here to condemn us. Because a lot of us, most of us, we feel because of the deception of the enemy, we feel that God is somehow angry with us or against us. In John chapter 3 verse 17, the Lord Jesus said, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Again, like the person approaching the deer who's stuck saying, hey, careful. Hey, I'm here to help you. It's okay. I'm not here to hurt you. Or again, like the veterinarian trying to catch whatever it is, the squirrel, the duck, the animal, saying, hey, hey, come here. You know, nice little squirrel. Come here, little squirrel. I'm not here to hurt you. And so, and, and again, this, this might seem mis uh, like common sense or like what's, what's the point, but so many of us We've been deceived. We don't understand that when Jesus approaches us, when He comes to us, when He beckons us to Himself, it's, be it's, it's, it's out of love and not out of condemnation. And again, the third aspect uh, to this I've already mentioned is that th the Lord Jesus came because our situation is not good, because we've become lost, because we've gone astray, because we're wounded and sick, because, because there's a blindness we have, because we're on this river that if we just go with the flow, we're going to end up to destruction, a waterfall. He, he came, and it says in Luke chapter uh, 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. He came because, and, and again, brothers and sisters, if we don't get this, just watch the news. You know, we're, a, we're a, a, a humanity of people who like to blow each other up. We like to, to, to do all kinds of awful things. You don't need me to go through the list. There's something wounded in us. And again, the Lord Jesus approaches us saying, I want to heal your souls. And not only, you know, the wars and the violence, but even how many of us, if we're honest, we admit we have aching hearts. There's a, there, our souls are not at rest. And Jesus is the one who, who says to us, and this is, this is the, 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 the next uh, important point of Jesus' coming. Jesus comes and He says to us, come to me. Again, kind of like the veterinarian trying to catch the little squirrel. The, the veterinarian is desperately trying to tell, you know, the, 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 the wounded animal, hey, come to me. Come to me because I can help you. Come to me, all you who are labored and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. You'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Again, 
the Lord Jesus, the, he, he simply wants us to come to him, as our young people are doing today in First Communion, as you are doing here today in this, in this Mass, in this liturgy, coming to the Lord Jesus and, um, and listening to his word. And then finally, again, uh, Jesus, part of his whole message is that, he, you know, God the Father loves us, he wants to heal us, come to me, I'll show you the way to freedom, so that you can live forever with your Father in heaven. And what did Jesus say? John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. For in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to prepare a place for you, so that where I am you may also be. Jesus, again, the one who came, became one of us to show us the way, to get us out of our misery, our, our woundedness, our, our, our enslavement. He comes, and he, he says, he says, he reminds us that we have a place in heaven, and then he ascends into heaven. And again, his ascension into heaven is for us, it's a demonstration. It's a demonstration of what we too, as human beings, are meant to do. We're meant one day to rise up to heaven. You know, Jesus was born just like us. He did not have uh, he was not born uh, through natural conception. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, but he came into the world just like us, so we can identify with him. He lived just like us. He died just like us. He died on the cross. His heart st stopped beating. But then after that, he rose. And again, as we heard from Romans, those who have died with Christ, we will also live with him. We will be raised up with him. And so again, Jesus he, he died just like us, and then, and then he rose. And it's interesting, for, for many days he appeared to the disciples. But eventually, Jesus, Jesus did ascend to heaven. Again, to show us that we too are meant one day to go to heaven, to, to ascend to heaven and to be with the Father for all of eternity. And this all begins with baptism, which these children were baptized, and it's, it's, it's sealed with receiving the body and blood of Jesus. Again, Jesus says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. And so this is a very special day for these children whom the Father loves, whom the Father has a place for heaven, a place prepared in heaven for, and whom the Father wants to bring to heaven one day through Jesus, and, and that's why, again, he gives them his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And so it's appropriate for you, my dear children, to be dressed in festive garments, because this is the beginning of an eternal union with God to which you are called, and praise God that you are aware of this beautiful truth. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Our Situation Is Not Good, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1874. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at theological issues. So many of the things we argue about between Catholics and Protestants, they're not issues. If you really go into the theology, you talk to the Catholic theologians, the Protestant theologians, we agree. No issue. And yet, at a lower level, we'll fight about these things and argue and quote scriptures and we're wasting our time. So if 
you're my vintage, or maybe a little bit older, you'll remember a program called Mission Impossible. And the show would always start off the same, where the agent would receive, um, would receive a tape, right? and uh, would listen to the tape that would describe the mission that this agent was to fulfill. And at the end of the tape, it was always the same kind of question, you know, if you decide to accept this mission. Well, God, God has a mission for you. Did you know that? That he has a mission for you that's perhaps different than the mission that I have. But we all share a common mission. The church has consistently taught that it actually exists to evangelize, that the mission of the church is to evangelize. And the church didn't make this up. The church got this from the words of Jesus himself who said, go into the whole world and make disciples of all nations. So that's, that's actually our job. The job of the church is to evangelize. And because we as the, as the laity, those who aren't ordained and those who haven't embraced the consecrated single life, because we are 99.9% .9 of the church, that mission of evangelization falls on you and falls on me. Now that's kind of a negative definition, right? The positive definition is that we have access to people that our parish priest doesn't. Our parish priest has access to, to those that, that fill the pews. And that's not to say that people who are in the pews need to be evangelized. Hey, I need to be evangelized. My, my conversion is still in progress. But especially today, most of the people that need to hear the gospel won't be found in a pew. They're going to be found at Home Depot and they're going to be found at Walmart. They're going to be found at your, at your doctor's office. They're going to be found at the water cooler. And so who is going to share the gospel with them? Well, it's in God's heart that it's you and it's me. It's almost like this. It's almost like God has split up the world in, into territories, into regions, right? And those regions, those territories that God has assigned correspond to our lives. <laughs> Jesus was sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I've been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Chris. <laughs> it's, almost like, it's almost like I have my own parish outside of the four walls of the church, and I call it St. Chris. Well, not a saint yet, but God willing in the future, and God is willing. So we all have a territory. We all have a mission field, and that mission field is our lives. There was, um, there was a sign I saw in my neighborhood, uh, a sign from a, a real estate agent that says, love where you live. And this is probably the most successful real estate agent in my neighborhood. And what a great sign for a real estate agent. Love where you live. Yes, you know, if you, if you go with me, you know, I'll help you find a house that, that you're going to love. But one day, when I drove by, something inside of me had a different spin on this. Love where, you're li where you live. That evangelization is basically the call to love. To, to pour out our lives to serve. And one of the ways we do that is we do explicitly share the gospel. But we're meant to be the light of God and the love of God. And where are we to love? Where we live. And so that's, that's where we evangelize. So you have a mission. Did you know that you're a missionary and that you have an assignment from God? I think a lot about evangelization and, and how it works. It's one of my pet topics. And one of the best ways, I think, to characterize how we're evangelists is the notion of ambassador. It's actually um, a metaphor that St. Paul uses. He says, you know, we are ambassadors. It's as if God was making his appeal through us. And I really like that metaphor because it's, it speaks to um, it speaks to the notion of assignment. An ambassador is assigned to a location, right? And in that assignment, 
he or she gently, kindly, diplomatically, but unwaveringly represents where they're from. Because the ambassador isn't from here. And neither are we. In a certain sense, as St. Paul would say, we're aliens, we're not from here, that heaven is our final destiny. And so in our lives, where we've been assigned as an ambassador, we represent the kingdom of God with all love and with all humility. Because our dignity as ambassadors doesn't come from us, it comes from who we represent. And so we can be perfectly humble as we represent the kingdom of God where we are. To echo the, the famous words, as far as I'm concerned, of Father Bob Bedard, who said, you know, my faith and my spiritual life has not made me better than anyone else, but it certainly made me better than I was. And so as ambassadors, with this great gentleness, kindness, diplomacy, and yet clarity, we represent the kingdom of God where we live. And so you're an ambassador, and so am I. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this, this wonderful and most dignified calling we have to represent you and represent the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God is, is even in us. Father, we're, we really do fumble around. like We really have a lot to learn about what it means to share the gospel in a way that is, is loving and is clear. We're not always great witnesses. So Father, we ask you to help us and give us your wisdom. Help us to do everything we do with love and help us to do it where we live. We invite you to send your prayer request to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. That's Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1874 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on, Our Situation is Not Good. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We asked you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post-dated checks or through our website to help us continue the Food for Life ministry. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at theological issues. So many of the things we argue about between Catholics and Protestants, they're not issues. If you really go into the theology, you talk to the Catholic theologians, the Protestant theologians, we agree, no issue. And yet, at a lower level, we'll fight about these things and argue and quote scriptures and we're wasting our time. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.